Welcome to the top 10 plays of 2016. You may remember me as a new key. First, I'd like to say a big thank you to you guys for supporting the show and a super special thank you to you guys over at the Anuki TV Discord community for helping me sieve through this year's plays. So without further ado, let's recap the year. In at number 10, an odd one. My top five plays just got a new visual update and we couldn't wait to kick things off with a baby. Let's watch and try and make sense of what I just said. Sonic Boom! Starlight, star bright. Jin Tian having an out of mana, out of health experience. Gonna meditate on that one and get back to the tower. Blue team, big fan of hunters. Arrow vendors loving it here. Hard bomb onto the overextended floor. So we go stabbing Sobe in the thigh. Captain Blade switching to Axis. Speedy's gotta get out of there. Too far forward. Rionra hiding in the cloud. Immortal shoot behind him though. So many distractions. The giant uppercut on the trees. Those trees don't move an inch. Level 20 trees on the battlefield. Red team retreats. Five versus three. Immortal cutting across onto Rionra. He belly flops back, Fiddy once again, so far forward, no fear, using airstrike to escape, Sonic Boom, four man Sonic Boom, everyone's critically low, the start of a line, kick the baby, don't kick the baby, there's something so very wrong about how awesome this is, meanwhile Sir Ego, who avoided the tragedy, tries to execute Fiddy, Kellers is however stops him with the space clothes, Rionra also ready to intercept, protect the carry at all costs, going back to the action, so much going on, Rionra assassinated the backwards spinning, but not winning the killer Q, unable to save a mortal shoot below, having trained with all the best martial artists, showing total and complete Jet Bruce Lee Sin, Jackie Kazarim Lord domination. Reddit gets what they want, and Loki dies. Moving one up, ranked ninth of this year's top 10 plays of 2016 supports rarely get time to shine, but these two opposing forces called Ribbit and Merlosan totally slay this play as the stars of the show. They, they finally got me. It's no fair! <laughs> so, so, usually though, you want to clear those minions out before making a move. Ribbit and Merlo Sack colliding in the minion divide. Ribbit seems to have come off worse though. Pro's 1989 isolating himself. You can see Ribbit pleading for him to get out of there. Massive smash of the maze. Crunch time gets cleansed. Still nothing Ribbit can do. Dump from sets up Merlo for the giant upper good. Those cooldowns should be back for Ribbit. Bros lands the moves and Tail Whip gives him the distance. Incoming Hail of Arrows nicely stepped around. They've got back to the tower. Ribbit table flips Merlo San into his domain and enters the waters for a turn around. Merlo San turning this into an advantage. Bounces Junko the minion directly into Apollo, recalling it a special. Place. Rivet isn't relying on him anyway. Merlo sleeping, Doug Drunk hacking away. Rivet's got minion back up the tail with interrupting his oppressors. Doug Drunk trying to jump. Rivet reaps his spine as he lands, and Merlo Sands waking up. Good morning. Good night. Both Merlo and Rivet were legends in this play. You know those moments where your whole team is dead and that means everyone's watching every single action you take? Well, Picklefinger gets one of those moments and he risks it for the biscuit. Chronos. Blue team pressuring the tower, but it's the enemy Athena to initiate onto Osiris and Sol. Good follow-up, locks Osiris down and finishes him off. Sol's down one cleanse, there blows the Kraken. Sirket fighting the internet, get him Sirket. Easy but disappointing kill. Kronos and Sol, the finest consistent damage mages are left. Thor and Poseidon are just around the corner and Red Team is mostly beat up. Sol is not discouraged, she's all fired up! Lord straight into the jungle, that's her demise! Pickle Finger is not gonna let their courageous action go to waste so many weaves! Rewinding Supersonic Spinball back into the shield wall but not dead! Revitalized and Poseidon in sight! Sanctuary behind the minions, Neef body blocking triple stop time! Neef, Poseidon, Thor! What a beautiful triple kill! Athena does not have the capability of one and one in Pickle Finger. Time to get some cash shop items. That looked glorious. In seventh place, we'll slow things down with ice ice temperatures. This one's going to be a long one, so strap on your seatbelts as Perilla takes you on for a cold tour. Yeah. One you. 
Orchie's hungry for some dragon, but Kukulkan's sitting pretty in that tower. Athena of the Mana looking to punish his overstay. Orchie's going all in. The biscuits are on the line, and Kukulkan says, no, thank you. I've got sanctuary. Perilla lending a hand. Orchie's got a predictable path to run down. Perilla aims to regroup, but he's tagging along. Naja, he's really going to bring out some hard CC now. Universal ring toss could end this. There it is. Doesn't even need to bounce much. Orchie's down. Perilla, evasive mode engage. Trying to be unpredictable. Taunted, sashed, knocked up, but I think that's all the crowd control over with for now. Guan Yu riding in hot. Where are you going? Perilla puts up a wall, keeps Guan Yu in the fight. Naja getting laser skin sliced off the shards of ice adds to their doom. Massive use of ultimates across the board whilst the Alex MC tries to defend Perilla. We've got action at the back. Oilation Apollo intercepting would be reinforcements in the front though. Perilla's diet of physical protection items continues to prove effective. Apollo's coming in to help. A lovely wall creates distance between him and Vamana. Going on an icicle rampage. Hoagie is in front of him. Keeping to the left. A meteor sunburst isn't going to melt him. Nor is the spirit of the nine wins. The Alex MC takes a Zephyr to the back. Dashes. Oh, yet another intercept. There's no stopping this. Alex bought Perilla time to blink out with a pet phoenix on his shoulder. Alex feeling pretty good about himself right now. The star of the show gets help from Apollo, taking advantage of Hoey's lack of positional awareness. Perilla re-enters the battle, turns away from the ricochet shot. He cannot be caged. He cannot be controlled. I'm sensing frustration as they cannot down him. Hoey's got a complete disregard for Apollo near him, and that's his downfall. Cavalry charge up once again, striking Kukulk, and this time allows the team to focus him. He's flapping away. Apollo gets the last hit needed. Athena taunting Perilla. The tower's blasting him now. No! This story doesn't have a happy ending for Perilla, but it's still a damn fine play. That not bad. Sixth place now, kind of a wacky one, but our special selector nuke is like this one for its unusualness. So, asphyxiate as Naja with a pure heart of gold. Taking camps is such an asphyxiating ball, but Odin's gonna make things exciting with the Raven Bomb. Guan Yu giving up all too easy asphyxiation with the armillary sash motivates Guan Yu to get his crescent blade out of the shade. Ring toss pings down the minions. Ring of Spears is Odin expecting backup. Asphyxiate throws him over to the clouds. It's not looking good for Odin, but he is laughing about it. Always something you can do. Attack his hearing. Isis blesses the ground with a circle of protection. It's charging up. That's nice to see for a change. Good zone and a nice little heal for Odin. Now, will they switch targets from Odin to Isis? Squishes first. That's the rule. Fantastic silence there. Odin calls the Raven Shield to Hasty Guan Yu. Ducks underneath a good prediction from him. Provides some minor healing. Kronos switches in with the rotation. The was the first kill of the fight, shortly followed by Isis Circuit. If only she was here earlier. She's not afraid that the numbers disadvantage. She can at least get Guan Yu before fleeing from the other two. She's got the mobility to do so. Asphyxia blinks in front and takes the last breath away. That's going to be extremely disappointing. But a smart move to dash away, a wonderful attempt, and a respectable retreat. It's time for that inevitable Scylla play. Feels will, man. And I don't think we can get a better Scylla play than this. One that really is just independent, and not relying on someone else to set them up. They rarely did this play by themselves. Scylla. Middle lane potential for maximum pain. Sobek snatches Athena, puts her in an uncomfortable position, Ram deciding that it's fine to appear behind your enemies. You know, it's not like they want to murder you or anything. The warriors and tanks mostly taking the initiative here. No fast damage, bit of kerfuffle, really. Oh, you piling on the meteors. Athena is taking a focusing. That's them out of the picture. Onto Ram. Sanctuary activated, walking away. Red team turned to Fafnir behind them. It's looking very successful for them. Feels Willman with a weak crush. Free man sick and Fafnir killed by minions. Double dogs of war. Bless the sanctuary saves Ho Yi. Wukong Stugman attack slow down. Easy to hit. Willman's got a double assassination opportunity. Nice dive upwards from Ho Yi. Agni shields himself in a high kill zone. Ho Yi is crushed, dumping into a triple kill. Sobek charging out the sick of a setting to a quadra kill. Basic attack maxing out of the pentakill. Feels Willman. Feels Will. Ranking fourth on this year's plays, a tactical play. And I love proper coordinated ambush. And this year's Sneaky Snakes, Pretty Prime and Thomas Zek show us some hot, hot coordinated owlish and Vulcan destruction. And I felt this should have been higher. And I was overruled. Vulcan. A wheelies. Pretty Prime and Thomas X scooting over to the right jungle. They've purposely made themselves seen. That much is obvious. 
Odin, Bacchus, Thor, nuclear launch not detected. That was an amazing knockup from Thomas Sek. The back cannon is pretty primed for a double kill. In comes the rest of the team, but Prime's already taken it to a triple kill. With three down, taking an objective should be easy. Ymir leads into the tower, but the Magma Bomb sets up Thomas for a gravity pull over the wall. Pretty Prime ascending to a quadra kill. Only one way to describe this play. Surprising. Taking top spot for support plays this year. In third place, a really long skirmish had just taken place. Active items baited out, and Philo just rolls in front of them. Timing here is everything. Vacation's over. You chose this. Everyone's here, but do you really want to be here fighting in a confined area like this one? Who does it benefit more? Both teams trying to bait out ultimates and relics. Blue team are down a couple of cleansers, but they do have Fire Giant. Philo, it's the same dude using the wall to optimize his role in blue team. Little time to retreat. This is so much better than a blink cataclysm. Kanzu time in the Lawbringer. Heroically slams into battle. Slides under the shock wave free in position. Stance switch. Fearless being in defensive stance to get behind them. Dragging three people back into the death. That is amazing. Naja and Rama ascend to the stars, but we already know this fight is over. It's a long sulk back to base. Coming right up is Snoopy. This guy was nominated for three plays of the year, but it's his Bologna 1 versus 3 showing us speed, style, and aggression that makes it in second place. Check out this legend. Bologna. Snoopy Bologna is messing around with Rob and taking the attacks to the shield, but it's important those minions are dealt with first. Bringing out the heavy weapons for the big numbers. Robin's retreat quite indirect. Doesn't want to give away the surprise of Kronos and Bastet. Snoopy lashes out, prevents Kronos from attacking. Bastet gets some cute damage in. Shield smash back to Hammer. Swings it around, swings it down. That's a flat kitty. Knocks out Robin for the double kill. The flag tags himself a triple kill. I've never seen style like this. In top place, this happened way back at the start of the year. Star of the play, Shadow 20,000, and his two sidekicks, Narrow and Wolverine, dominate the battlefield. Enjoy. Fenrir. All right, pay attention because everyone is here. It's mass convergence from both teams, but they aren't all here yet. It's extremely light skirmishing. Wolverine leaps out onto Kronos, stunning him. Capri with the pick up. Kronos has to be a little too liberal with that Hoi ultimate. Both teams withdraw. Agni nearly running into the unstable vortex, though. Apollo diving deep with a fatal attraction to Bastet. Narrow lock and loads his blue beam. Gonna send Wolverine through space and time. Perfect opportunity with all this commotion. Wolverine knowing Kronos has no purification beats at hand can make the prime Ragnarok pick. Kronos ages shields and Wolverine escapes. Both had backups. Capri would have resurrected that Wolverine anyway. Capri's on the front line, allowing Narrow and Shadow to continue to apply damage. Apollo's doing his own thing. Capri has has to back away now. Ymir unsuccessful with the cutoff. Nero pulls through the wall. We're left with Apollo and Shadow. No more Apollo though. The lone warrior unable to gain any kills. Shadow rolls out the water scroll, blinks towards Ho Yi, and geysers the hell out of him. Fantastic exploitation of Team Red's position. He can walk. He moves back and gets Agni to run into the crushing wave. Clear warrior purification beats. Prevents the sun. Stipes their water sprout and Kronos into the water cannon. Takes it to the triple kill. That was a beautiful display of water bending, Shadow calling it quits here, leaving refreshed Wolverine and Narrow to finish off the remaining. Oh, one more thing to celebrate the new year. Fancy a chance to win an Anuki announcer pack? We'll be doing giveaways all January on Twitter and in Discord. Good luck.